All right, so it's uh, just after 5.30, we'll call the select board meeting to order for Wednesday, May 5th, 2021. And this meeting is being recorded. All votes will be taken via roll call. And in attendance from the select board is myself, David Phil, Joyce Chunglo, Jane Nevin-Smith, John Muskevitz, and Amy Parsons. And uh, first thing we have on the agenda is the consent agenda. We have warrants AP2145, AP2145S, AP2145-2, and that's it. So moved. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any discussion? Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Uh, Nevin Smith? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Skevitz? Yes. And Parsons. I have to interrupt. This isn't Amy Parsons. This is Amy Lamica. That is a problem. <laughs> Sorry. I'll rename myself. Sorry. Okay. And I'm going to check with Amy Parsons and see if she's on her way. And I'm going to mute myself for just a moment. But that was a all eyes with four people. So they're still good to go. All right. So just to correct the record for... Uh the minutes. It's David Phil, Joyce Chunglo, Jane Nevin-Smith, and John Wilskevitz here currently from the select board. All right, so next we have uh, public comments. We'll limit this to 15 minutes, three minutes per person. If you're here for public comments, turn on your camera, wave at us, let us know you're here for public comments, please. Looks like uh, Ryan O'Hara uh, turned on his camera. Go ahead, sir. Hi. Yes. Hello, very briefly. Uh, my name is Ryan O'Hara. I'm here this evening on behalf of Peter Hieronymus and uh, just have a brief comment about agenda item 6.1, which is the North Hadley Village Hall RFP. Uh, Mr. Hieronymus wanted to, to appear tonight and just say that he thinks it's important for any bidders on that project to know and whatever other members of the public are here that there was a prior request for proposals for that project where Mr. Hieronymus was selected as the uh, successful responsible bidder. He is currently involved in litigation with the town seeking to enforce that contract and purchase the North Hadley Village Hall pursuant to the terms of that contract. And uh, that's just, in our view, a pretty important fact for both, of course, the board to be aware of in its discussion tonight, although I know the board is certainly aware of it, but also just the bidders themselves and then the members of the public who had previously so strongly come out in support of Mr. Hieronymus's own proposal. So uh, I'll limit my comment to that. I appreciate all of your time and thank you for letting me speak tonight. And uh, that's all, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Anybody else here for, uh, go ahead, uh, Jennifer. Uh, Amy, Amy was with the animals in the barn. She is sorry, but she is on her way, just a little, running a little late. All right, no problem. Uh, anybody else here for public comment? Last call. All right, I don't see anybody else, so we will move on. Uh, we have kind of a long meeting, I imagine, tonight. So first thing we'll get to is the annual, uh, yeah, annual town meeting warrant presentation. If, uh, Carolyn, if you want to start on that. Sure. Uh, before I start, David, is there a, uh, would you prefer that I just go uh, article by article, or I thought I could uh, go over what was not uh, was not addressed at the special town meeting as well as the consent, consent address uh, agenda and then go into some of the more specific articles are is that good for the board or do you want to go back over those older articles do we need to uh was there anything that was left over from the meeting does the select board need to make a recommendation on that you had made recommendations on them do it select board Before. do we want to relook at those items see if we still support those or not Sure, why not? Okay, so, yeah, let's let's hit them all so we have fresh votes. Okay, yeah, excellent. Yeah, oh, wait a minute. I had some questions on the ones we had already on there. Okay, excellent. Okay, so but, before- I always had something. Oh, sorry. Well, I just ask a question. So um, in doing the warrants, are you putting in budget there? Or are you leaving that out? Not Right now, the budget's not in here. Okay, The, the article to vote on it is, but we haven't put okay. those final numbers in. Okay, because we haven't talked about a few things. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. 
So um, I just want you to know that this is your, well, it's your first draft with the motions, but it's probably my 57th draft. So I did not give you a lot of the drafts and update them constantly. So I hope that that was okay. But I do want you to know it's still in draft form. Even as we were posting it today, I saw some edits that I needed to change. You're gonna see highlights with different colors. Those are simply for me of information that I'm waiting for or legal, I'm waiting for some responses from legal. Some of the explanations don't have anything in it because I'm waiting for whoever's gonna be addressing that article to give me some uh, a, a brief uh, summary of that article. So if you're good with that, um, I do wanna also uh, thank Susan Kotowski for helping me with it, edit it. She was my second eyes and she was a huge help. So I have, I have not received a warrant. I did not pull it off of the computer. So I'm going blind here. We can um, actually, I'm going to have um, Jennifer pull it up. Would that okay. help? Yeah. Yep. Th that would be great. Thank you. And it, can I stop into town hall and pick one up on Friday? Absolutely. Thank yep. you. Absolutely. Okay. So article one is regarding the emergency rental assistance for COVID-19. Would you like me to read it? How would you, I don't, I don't want to make it go too slow, but I want to give you as much information as possible. Do you want me to read the article? So this is the same article that's left over, right? And uh, I think all of us have seen this other than Amy Parsons the last time around. Um, I don't have, I'm off, um, somehow I don't have it on the computer. I can't see it, it's black. Oh, wait a minute, here we go. Got it, Never mind. Got it, okay. You'll, you'll also see that the motions I put in italics, it was easier for me to differentiate between the two. Yeah, uh, originally, and I don't know how you got the select board 500, because I don't think I voted for that one. And I know we had mentioned that, that article after the special town meeting, and we're going to lower that amount, I believe. If yeah. we even need it anymore, I don't even know. I was actually for this last time around. Um, I'm against it now based on the response we had with the affordable housing trust money and the amount of federal and state programs out here. I don't think we should be using CPA money for this. So my vote has changed on this. Is anybody, have we had applications for other sources of funding for rental assistance? I think Dylan's here. Hey, Dylan, do you want to chime in on that? The recent check-in uh, was there was low interest in in um, the emergency rental relief. Uh, don't know what the updated numbers are. We do have a request to Jana to update that uh, because the Housing Economic Development Committee will be meeting tomorrow uh, where we're going to discuss that and we're going to discuss this article as well. So we'll have more information uh, after tomorrow's meeting. But, but so far to date, there's nobody has outreached any funding for rental? The last time I checked in with the numbers, which was about two weeks ago, there was no applications. Correct. All right. Thank you. Can we just pass over this article? Can we well, pull let's, the CPA need to pull it? Can we wait until um, it would be fair for them to have their meeting tomorrow night and then update us at our next meeting and then we can make that decision? All right. Yeah, I don't see why not. But I, I thought we lowered that amount to 50,000 actually. So let them do their homework on it and bring it back to our administrator and we'll take it from there. When do you, Carolyn, when do you need the uh, recommends numbers? I think that we're gonna, I'm gonna have you guys vote on it next week. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna, okay. Okay, I didn't think, I, I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't think we had a meeting next week, but that's my mistake. Yeah, we need to just uh, to, because of the timeline and the votes and the recommendations that are gonna be needed from the finance committee for you. And then also for you to vote before the following, uh, the, let's see, the 19th is the public forum. Okay. I can go on to article two? Sure, okay. yes, okay. please. That's the North Hadley Cemetery, Russellville Cemetery and Hockenham Cemetery. 
uh, for the transfer of 60,000 from the Community Preservation Act set historic set aside fund to uh, three of those cemeteries for uh, restoration, preservation, and the fence at the historic Hockenham Cemetery. My vote hasn't changed on that, it's a yes. Do you wanna knock this one out and reaffirm our votes just since nothing's I'll, changed? I'll, I'll make a motion that we accept this article. I'll second. Do we, need, do we need to wait for Amy Parsons to show up? She's here now. Oh, okay, good. Yep. So motion by Joyce, second by John and uh, Jennifer, do you want to roll call it? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Skevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Article three is the planning, the planning board zoning bylaw definitions. Um, can you move that up, Jennifer? Thank you. Did you want to discuss that, any of that? That's a planning board. No, make a motion to accept for planning board. Do you need to have a second on that? I'll second. Okay. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Jennifer. I'm, I'm coming, I'm just. Scrolling, scrolling. Uh-huh. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Um. Yeah, I thought we left this up to the planning board last time. We didn't That's what I was gonna say. I didn't think that y'all voted on those. Yeah. yeah, actually I see Bill's here from the planning board. Sorry, Bill, didn't even see you there. Uh, did you want to say anything about this? But uh, or we typically leave these to you, right? Typically, you do not take a position on planning board articles. <clears throat> I was just giving you a. I was just giving you a hurrah tonight, Bill. <laughs> we passed over it at, at the other town meeting. I want to make sure you get it there this yep. year. Third time around. Third time. Third time. <laughs> third time's a charmer. So I just wanted to make that motion. I'm in favor of it, Bill. Will you withdraw your motion, Joyce, so that way we can... I, I, I guess if you want me to, uh, okay. David, I will, yes. All right, excellent. So we'll move on, unless Bill wants to chime in anything on the definitions. Uh, no, it's um, <clears throat> this is really, despite its length, a, a housekeeping article. We're vacuuming up definitions that appear in 20 different places in the bylaw and putting them all together in one, uh, in one spot. Sounds good. We like housekeeping. Yeah, thank you. And Bill, you'll see that those changes, uh, the formatting and the changes that you had sent aren't in there. I didn't uh, put those, I didn't uh, adjust them for tonight. Okay. They will. So if you review it and you see that up, oh, they're not on there, it's I haven't gotten to that yet. So okay, that's fine. That's the same with article four as well. Okay. Yes, we're, we're leaving it to them. Okay. Article five is the stretch energy code want to go, how much do you want me to read? How much information do you want? That was from left over from special town meeting. I, nothing, that's, that's fine. Did we need to take a motion on that? Yeah, are you guys ready to vote on that tonight? I'm, my vote hasn't changed, so I'm all right with it. But. Where are we on it? Is it five to nothing? Uh, was. was. Yes. It Amy, did you, did you have any questions about this one or are you okay to vote on this tonight or what are you thinking? Oh, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by John. Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Gavitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so article six is grants and gifts. That's part of the consent agenda. Um, it's just giving the town permission to accept grants and um, gifts so that we don't have to come back and ask each time that that happens. Well, why wouldn't we wanna take money? It's really, it's, this is more of a housekeeping as well. 
So this is on the uh, consent. Uh, consent agenda, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, um, so moved. Second. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Megan Smith? Yes. Chungalu? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Article seven is on the consent agenda as well. That is chapter 90 funds that come in pretty much automatically for highway. And there's a little history of what we, I went back to FY 2019 to show you what we've taken in. Uh -huh. I motion to approve. Second. Oh, second, but I, I had already mentioned we need to take a good look at that chapter 90 money and as the board used to drive around and take a look at how it was spent Joyce yep number we need to get back to doing that again I'd be happy I'd be happy to do that some night and take a ride yeah yeah I, I just we've had a couple problems and I don't want to see it happen again okay sounds like a plan uh, I think it would be that the DPW director would set up what he feels is, and then we would go on that tour uh, and see if that's actually what where we wanted to put our money at that point. Yes, exactly. Yep. Okay. Sounds like a good idea. All right. So the who was who made the motion? I did. All right, and seconded by Jane. Uh, Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungaloo. Yes. Ms. Gavitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Article eight is short-term borrowing. That's another consent agenda that gives the treasurer uh, approval from the select board to borrow money from time to time uh, when they're anticipating revenue, but it hasn't come in yet. So moved. Second. Jennifer. Okay. Uh, roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Devin Smith? Yes. Chungalu? Yes. Ms. Garrett? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Article 9 is consent agenda as well. That is for fund balance transfers. This is uh, any money that we've used for borrowing or we borrowed for and we um, have leftover money or it wasn't, it wasn't needed and, and another uh, revenue source paid for it. That would have been uh, the special town meeting article 19 for the school parking lot. There's 11,000 left. Um, so that is uh, the balance is being returned to, to replenish borrowing. So moved. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalu? Yes. Gavitz? Ms. Gavitz? Sean, are you with yeah. us? Yeah. Hey. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. The next is consent agenda. This, you've been doing this for a few years, the water treatment filtration uh, stabilization fund. So moved. Thank you. Okay. Joyce, Jane with the second, Jennifer. Okay, roll call for Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungalo. Yes. Ms. Gavit. <clears throat> yes. And Parsons. Yes, thank you. And then Article 11 is uh, the Community Preservation Act Committee's um, is, uh, is on consent agenda. And it's to, um, they have their set aside for open space, historic preservation and housing, and then $3,000 uh, from the Community Preser Preservation Fund um, to allow for any necessary expenses related to the committee's use and administrative expenses. That so it is consent. Okay. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. 
Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalu? Yes. Ms. Kevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. So the uh, Article 12 is a consent agenda, but I did want to just highlight three uh, revolving accounts that we are going to be, um, it's no longer in use and we want to return that money to free cash. Uh, electrical inspections, you'll hear when uh, we touched about, we touched a little bit on it on the budget um, that use the electrical inspection is, uh, did their, receive their revenues differently than the other inspectors like the plumbing inspector. Um, so this is going to we're no longer be used a revolving fund because it doesn't go back into the general fund, which the other inspection revenue does. So this is, um, I don't know the history of it or why it was different, but with the discussions with the finance committee, we thought that this would be uh, a finance team, I'm sorry. It would be best to take this out of revolving and have it function just the way that the uh, plumbing inspector, inspectors and building inspectors do. The other one is the after school program uh, that used to be done with from the director of Parks and Rec, Jenny, uh, for the schools and they would pay, they paid seven and a half hours for her every week to do the after school, the administrative uh, and coordination of that program. Uh, they are, they are not doing that. And if they do, they're going to do it themselves. So that, uh, that there's no use for that account anymore. And then the other one is Russellville School, Joyce's favorite. I'm mean, sorry, Russell School, Joyce's <laughs> favorite. Um, yeah. That we are not, obviously we are not leasing that out or um, letting people use it for in renting it. So um, there's really no use for that account as well. Legal, I do have the attorneys looking that over to just make sure that all of that, um, it, it, it's, it's legit. So that's what I wanted to, that's why it's highlighted because the uh, the attorneys are looking at that. I'm afraid, Carolyn, it was the North Hadley Hall that was my uh, yeah. monkey on my back for all these years. Not more or less, not the Russell School, but I can take that one on next. So, no problem. Hey, did did the weights and measures go up? Is that twenty nine thousand correct? Because I thought that that fee went up from the city of Northampton. I have to check, John. I can check. Okay, because I thought we voted on and that, that. And that's not the, the fee. That's what you're allowed to spend. That's what you guys have approved that you can um, allow to spend out of that account. It's not necessarily what the what the cost of that program is. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure the guy gets paid for what he's doing over there because we we're shared with the Northampton inspector. So, right. I'll make an, a motion to accept the consent agenda with the changes. I'll second it. All right, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Ms. Gevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Article Let's see, Article 13 is uh, the DPW projects that we are having to do this year. They're emergency pro uh, projects and um, we are looking to, to pay for that. Um, if, you, if you remember, it is, uh, it's Mount Warner, the tree removal for the access to the water tank. Mount Holyoke electrical alarm system needs to be addressed immediately and the nightly road culvert head wall repair needs to be addressed immediately. Um, so, but we need to get funding for that. So we're looking at, it, we ha I have borrowing here. I don't think we're gonna have to borrow. Linda and I were talking more specifically today. We may be able to repurpose some borrowing from another uh, article, especially with a the culvert, there might be some extra money, um, but we probably will be able to um, use water reserves, but that isn't, that isn't definite yet, so. I just want you to know the source may change. Yeah, I thought Chris said that electrical was going to be about 80,000 for Mount Hoyle. He I think that's the adding contingency. Those are the numbers we've, I would, I've been meeting with Chris every week and that's the number he's been staying with. Well, I'd rather yeah. go over than under. Yeah, I know, but he just presented <laughs> it 
at 80,000 last week. So I'll check with them. It's better to have a little bit more authority than not be able to finish the project. So. Yeah. I'm making a motion to accept these with our possibilities of changes within the next uh, week or so, if there's any change to the numbers. Sounds good. Second. All right. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Hello? I see you said yes. I couldn't hear you, but you said yes. Uh, yes. Thank you. Ms. <laughs> I'm getting weak. Yeah. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. The levy assessment study phase, that is what Rich Niles presented uh, <laughs> last week. I think we really have to do that. Get more information. There's already a million questions of what kind of dike we're going to put up on Bay Road. So yeah. we really need to elaborate on that and have them have them come up with some kind of a program here to present to the people first. This is such a short frame to put something together for town meeting. Yeah. Um, wondering if this should not be presented at the fall town meeting when we have a better idea of, of what we know for our finances. And it might give us some time um, over the summer. Sometimes the legislature will ask us if we have anything that we want to uh, take to the Senate or the House um, for monies. Uh, this certainly might be one of those things that we can give them this year. Well, as he said, you know, if we if we spend this amount of money on a legwork right now, this probably will go into a federal program uh, because it was built by the uh, Army Corps engineers originally. So. But the Army Corps of Engineer, when we were having a break in the dike, didn't want to have anything to do with it. I, I understand that, Joyce, but this is just one little leg of this whole big project that needs to be done before we... Oh, I am absolutely in agreement with you, John, that it needs to be done. There's no doubt about that. I'm just worried about the funding, where it's going to come from. Well, let's give it to the town to make the decision. Well, they can make the decision thus to us as the, basically the keepers of the town. Um, on how we want to fund this. Uh, we don't have any monies anywhere. We would have to do a, I would say a borrow on this to see uh, about getting it done. Um, my thoughts were again, is to certainly put this out there to our legislatures to help us um, with this project, um, whether it be just the uh, contingent on what they find for the first leg of this trip uh, and then it certainly is going to have to be, we're going to have to tap them if there needs to be any work done on it, um, which they did really support us the last time, thanks to John Scheibach. So let's um, let's see what they come up with and then see where we take it for the townspeople. I think that's you know basically what, this is the position that we're in. This is part of what we need to do as a select board and not necessarily put it all on the townspeople to do it. This is something that is the town. It protects the town, and that's part of our job. You know, whether we don't need to take this to the people, that's our job to be able to protect this town for any break. Type. So I think it lays with us and not necessarily the townspeople. Well, it lays with us, but ultimately, if we don't get a, anything offered from the legislature, then we're going to the town later and it's going to cost more. I think we should get the go ahead to do it. And then and perhaps there will be an opportunity to ask for the money before we start the project. Well, I don't mind. I don't know if it's now or in the fall. That's my, my take on it. Yeah, I don't think that um, these people have given us enough money, time. I know they're asking $150,000 right now to do the legwork. Um, you know, and I don't mind supporting that if that's what everybody wants to do. I know it needs to get done. John, where are you on this? 
Yeah, I mean, we need this before we even approach the state or the federal government on this. And this isn't a project that's going to happen in the next four or five years, probably. So if we get this much done and we can apply for the grant money and they're like a matching fund thing, I think it's only going to be in the best interest of the town and the taxpayers. So. Well, if they want to do their presentation to the town at town meeting, that's fine. You want to do it this this uh, coming May, this month? Yep. Uh, Carolyn, the gentleman from the consulting firm is going to come to town meeting, is that correct? Yeah, he will do either if you wanted to have him come to um, the public hearing or the meeting, he will do it. He, he was open to doing both of them. I thought he gave he a great both. I think he might be, he might do both. I threw out both of those to him to see if he'd be available. I move we put this on the ward as is. Yeah, I'll second it. Motion by uh, Jane, second by John. Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Miskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. I'm going to skip um, to Article 17, Water and Sewer Line Replacement on Route 9. I am going to tell you, I think these numbers are too low. Um, as I said, the information changes day to day, and I did hear from the engineering consultants. Um, I think it's going to be more like 929,000. What, what wasn't included in here was any police detail and um, the consulting fees themselves. So I would rather go larger um, than underfund it, but I will meet with Chris. He wasn't in today, so I'll meet with Chris to go over the engineer num engineer's numbers with his um, and get a better breakdown as well, as well for the water and the sewer. But I do think it's gonna be closer to, it, it, it will be over 900,000. But again- For both, for both Carolyn? The combination. Just water, the combination. combination. Yeah. Okay. But yep. again, it is uh, saving the town over a million dollars. And Joyce, this was an example um, of, I did reach out to our legislators and our, um, uh, our congressmen, mm -hmm. but um, I kind of got di diverted back to uh, a grant program that I will be um, pursuing in June for Mass Works. And so it's on the warrant that we would be borrowing for that um, with the anticipation that may get reimbursed by Mass Works. Okay. But I won't know that I won't know for sure until August, and we have to have that money committed by September. Yeah, I, I think we have to have a certain amount of money committed before they'll even consider matching funds or grant. Right? Okay. So, can, and I, I guess why are we borrow? Don't we have enough in water the Water Enterprise Fund to at least pay the water portion of this rather than than actually borrow? Is that something that's a possibility? It's just if you there's it's definitely a possibility. And again, these aren't set in stone. What I have, I just wanted to put something in here. Linda and I are talking more about that. I, I think it's going to be a decision that um, you know we'll have to bring all of you into because you don't want to drain some of those accounts that much. But yeah, I know it's you know sewers next to nothing just because of the expenses there, but I know water is doing pretty well. I think we have a million or so. Linda's here. Linda, you know. The problem probably. is if we have some more emergencies, David, she, she'd rather borrow a little bit than spend, expend all our money from those incorporation funds, those enterprise funds. We had a water yeah. break on the road today. Remember that? Yeah, John just made the point I was going to make that if we borrow it, it is still going to be paid out of water, but it will be paid over a few years. And with the interest rates low, it be, might be better for us to pace it out because if we have another water break, then we'll be able to do the same thing and we can stretch the um, stretch the water revenues, or water, water reserves further if we if we push that out and, and deal with it one at a time. So the, the price you've put in there at 800000 and you think it's actually going to be not more than nine. Should we correct that number? Oh yeah, those th that just came in today. So you're going to see a lot of 
none of the content of these articles will change other than if the if I get more specific numbers or a narrative that is better than what, what I have here for any given article after uh, town council reviews it. So um, those, I'm, I'm definitely going to put that up to, I think it's gonna be like 927 is what the number, but um, I just didn't have time to, to update that. And I did wanna to talk to Chris as well. I'm gonna make a motion for us to keep this on the agenda uh, with uh, fluid change in the numbers uh, as needed. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungalo. Yes. Muscovitz. Yes. Parsons. Yes. In article 18, um, instead of me explaining that, I think uh, Chief has talked about it with you before, but I think I saw him on. I don't know if you wanted to have him provide any information about it. Chief on? Yeah. Did anybody have any questions? Sorry, Mike, I threw you, I didn't warn you. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're actually, uh, we've received a really great opportunity to um, purchase uh, a used ambulance from the city of Northampton uh, that has an impeccable uh, service record. Um, in working with Carolyn and David, uh, we did uh, provide a document to them stating we would based upon funding. Um, we've had in capital now for over 10 years, a request for the purchase of a BLS ambulance. Um, and that for a new ambulance is well over $280,000. So we're looking at being able to initiate a BLS service uh, at some point, um, obviously at a much reduced cost uh, for the startup. This also includes all the equipment in it uh, that is well valued over the cost of this. Uh, it's pretty amazing what they're offering to us uh, as our neighbors. So just as we um, try to help our surrounding communities with you know, donating uh, equipment. Uh, the city of Northampton is providing us with this opportunity. And I will put together a short little document about it. Uh, it will take us some time to put it into into uh, into service. And it, the intent is for it to cover the second calls that come in or third calls that come in when our primary uh, paramedic level ambulance is out and we have to call in mutual aid or our uh, the action med two that is stationed at the bridge right now. Last year, there was 150 calls that were missed by the town of Hadley, uh, our med one that had to be covered by mutual aid or uh, the Hadley med two. So we're looking to try and bring that revenue into our own our own pockets rather than uh, going to actions med two or um, a mutual aid ambulance coming in. So this I would be concurrently with action, but be staffed by our own people. Yeah, the intent is to uh, basically they'll we'll put together um, we'll put together the information as to how it would actually work. But uh, all of our full time folks are EMTs, including myself and the deputy chief. So if we have a call for a motor vehicle accident where many a time there's multiple injuries where we have to bring in multiple ambulances, uh, either myself and the deputy or the on duty crew could um, act as that second ambulance. Uh, in an effort to continue with the great response times. But, uh, you know, we've had multiple, uh, you know, multiple incidents where uh, Med One is out and we have second calls coming in and, you know, we're, we're trying to find another ambulance. So this would fill that gap. So if we go to mutual aid, I'm just looking for information. Do we pay them something? Yeah, so Thanks. if we call for a mutual aid, actually, so mutual aid, they receive the receipts, the money for the, the transport. Uh, if we call a mutual aid intercept, so uh, if Med2 is in town um, and we need to request an, an advanced level of care, so if it's a, you know, it's a, a heart attack or something more severe, uh, basically we pay a, a base fee to our, our, um, our communities that we have our ALS intercept agreements with. But then we bill out for the total ambulance call 
can we pay them just that that ALS intercept fee? So this is something that um, is, of course, uh, much on my mind the past, I don't know, you can say 18 years or more because I've been on the ambulance study committee since I was on school committee. So that's that's a long time. And our goal always has been for us to be able to start up. Um, this is a great step in the direction of us to be able to sustain and have our own ambulance. Um, when you first start up an ambulance committee, you have to start off as the BLS. And then it takes a year or more to get advanced into the ALS. So my, my thing is, is that this is a great opportunity uh, and a great price um, for us to purchase this uh, ambulance and uh, be the backup and not miss the calls and the revenue that we could be uh, getting from that. We have had great service from Action uh, the first year we got great money back. And of course with COVID, it makes a difference because we have not had a lot of calls for Amherst, uh, you know, for university and things like that and the traffic. So that was cut back a little bit, but as we see the light at the end of the tunnel here with schools reopening around us, um, this is certainly going to be a service that would um, benefit our town. So I certainly am in favor of this and I would like everybody else to support it. Yeah. So my vote is to make a motion to accept this uh, purchase of a used ambulance from Northampton. I'll second that, but I have one more question for Mike. Okay, good. When you um, put together your conversation about this for town meeting, could you please include some numbers that will show how quickly this $20,000 will get paid off so that the people will recognize that? Absolutely. That, um, yeah. I mean, if you're looking, I can tell you right now, we've done some, we've, we've done initial research on what uh, communities around us are charging for a BLS level of service. And you're looking at between a thousand and $1,500 per call. So, right. I mean, so very few calls, calls, very few calls. Yeah. How We're also calls? still attempting to find some donations for this ambulance as well um, to further decrease that. So we're still we're still working on that. Um, so I would hope maybe we'll have some good news for that as well. The other number that would be useful is how many of those calls did we use? Not last year. It wasn't a regular year. The year before. Yeah, Just actually. So the year before was over 100 calls. We had a call mutual aid. So we're, we're looking between 100 and 150 calls a year. They were calling right. mutual aid or thousand dollars a call. This is a big savings, and I think that the people will understand that. The other big part is just also remember that we decreased our response times for having to call mutual aid right. from eight to fifteen minutes down to four to five minutes. Right. So Correct. again, you're talking about a another ambulance being available to us. Plus, if you know if there ever was an instance where our you know our med one went out of you know went down or anything, we would have the ability to. Um, still provide ALS transports with them getting on our ambulance. And we have a place to store this, right? North Station, Absolutely. that's correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, you know, most people know that when the idea of action ambulance came up, I was skeptical, but uh, the facts and figures have uh, proven that it's, it's, possible to, to make money for the town off of stuff like this. Uh, not last year, but the year before, we basically had free ambulance service. That also improved our response time. Even with COVID, uh, we ended up, uh, what, paying about 50% of the cost of the ambulance contract only. Is that about right, Chief? Just, to, just under half. We were down about 150 calls last year. Yeah. You know, yeah. Folks just weren't calling. Um, I think they were afraid to go to the hospital. So the, and I know one of the concerns people always have is oh, we're buying more stuff or, or expanding departments, but this is using the existing firefighters that we have um, that are already trained and with the opportunity to, to recapture some of that revenue. So, yeah. This was also a priority in the study that the town paid, paid for um, when we did an evaluation of the fire department. Um, this is one of those items that came up as being a, a priority to look into for not only response times and quality of care, but um, revenue. It's, it's just moving forward with things that we need to do for the town. All right, if there's nothing else, uh, Jennifer? 
I made the motion. Yep, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Second. Yes. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Thank you. Chungalo? Yes. Miskevitz? No. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so Article 19 is actually a consent agenda as well. Let me just check. Yes, that's for um, some projects that did not get, get completed this year. Um, I think I think some of them, especially the restoration uh, with the cemeteries, ha did have to do with COVID and contractors not coming out to do to do that type of work. Um, so that is a consent agenda. We already approved all the consent agenda. Does this fall under that? It's this would be so. We'll work that out, but we were trying to, um, the way we were placing it, I'm trying to place it with, um, it wasn't a part of last year's, so it, I didn't have it up front. And um, I think it was the placement, we had worked on it together with that. There's a reason, and I'm sorry, Jen, I can't remember why we put it there, but I can certainly put it under the consent agenda. Let's just, uh, if we can have a motion anyway. It's just I think those it. have to be voted on separately, not on a consent agenda. Because that's uh, APR. Uh, I know we did the cemeteries, but I, I think they need to be separate. Even as an extension, John? Well. So... Yeah, if, I, if we could just get a motion, because regardless of where it's located on the article, we could just record our votes. That'd be good. So moved. Second. All right. Was that a motion by Amy? Second by Jane? Jennifer? Yeah. We'll call vote Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Uh, yes. Miskevitz? Yes. Parsons. Yes. Thank you. I think you better. I think you better check with the CPA because I'm pretty sure those those were separate for all those uh, special town meeting and the annual town meeting for the APR land. So I think those are individual. Okay, I'll check, John. Okay. Uh, Next is uh, we have uh, APRs. So there's uh, Gorlinski. I don't know how much detail, I know you're familiar with, with the APRs, but did you want me to go into any detail? No, I mean, I think it's pretty straightforward. Oh, that's good. I see even that APR is separate. It's gotta be voted on separately. So I'm pretty sure that those other okay. ones yeah, yeah, I can do that. All right. Uh, I'll make the motion, yeah, to accept this one. Second. Second. <clears throat> motion by John, second by Jane, and uh, Jennifer. Roll call, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Ms. Gennett? Yes. Parsons. Yes. Thank you. Article 21 is also CPA funding APR for Handrich. Yeah, uh, so moved. Second. I guess second. I don't know who's doing that. All right, motion by John, second by Jane. Jane's beating you all to all the seconds tonight. <laughs> You're all sleeping. <laughs> get through this meeting. Jennifer. Sorry, roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Mm, yes. <laughs> Skevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. 
And I, for the article 22, I am going to read it to uh, not the whole thing, but to see if the town will vote to appropriate 13,500 from the Community Preservation Act general fund to the first congregational church for the purpose of repair and restoration of 1909, oh, 1909 Seth Thomas clock located in the historic center of Hadley. Does this oh mean that chimes will work in it? And <laughs> well, it's part of our historic district. I think I'll vote yes on that. I'll make a motion to accept that. Second. Second. Okay. And motion by Joyce, second by John. Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Article 23 is also funding from conservation for the Galinsky APR. What's the difference What's between 20 and 23? What'd you say? What is the different parcels, I'm assuming? Are the parcels different? <laughs> they may just have been worded differently because conservation may have worded it differently than CPA. They're both river road, prof I don't know the map and parcel on the first one. Can you go back up, Jennifer? I think conservation went into more detail in theirs. One. Well, it shouldn't be, there shouldn't be two on there for the same parcels, whether it's conservation. It I can, I can explain if uh, you don't mind, because I'm on the CPA. Please. Okay. So what it is, is on these APRs, Skrilinski and, um, well, actually in Hanrich, they're both funded 90% by the state, and 5% is going to come out of CPA funds, and 5% will come out of the conservation, um, um, the TDR, I think it's called. Um, they usually show on the warrant. Um, my recommendation is maybe we can link them together because usually they're on the same page, one right after the other, but because they're coming out of two different um, accounts, one's TDR, one's CPA, they do show separately. That's how they have been in the past. But it is half and half. the same parcel. It's exactly the same parcel. All it is is um, it's half of it's being funded out of one account, half out of the other account. So the town's funding 10%, state's funding 90%. I haven't seen it split like this before. On well, town yeah, it shows on the same page, usually. Yeah. It, it looks like it's the same thing. It's And, and it's talked about one right after the other. But usually, it, and it's just all, TDR. It all, yeah, it all usually comes out of CPA. That's why, Joyce, this has got two different funding uh, parts to it. So. Yeah mechanisms okay so can we at least put them next to each other on the warrant so 20 and 21 so that the people don't say how come they're not next to each other and then they can just run right one to the next say you just voted on this one it's voted money's coming from here and this one the money's coming from here same person. I mean it would be the same thing with the hand one because that was article 21 and now it's 24 right so you're, I still have to put them separately, Jane. You're, you're not saying the same article, right? No, no. separate. Yeah. Okay. One after yep. Just change your article subsequent articles. Down. Carolyn, were you just trying to keep the CPA together and then go on, right? I was, yeah. yeah. This is fine. Yep. Okay, so I missed that if we had a motion, but can someone make a motion to approve this? I'll move. So, so move. All right, that was Jane and uh, can I get a second? Second. Second, second by Joyce. And uh, we'll let Carolyn shuffle the article numbers around, but the substance is gonna say that stay the same. So Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Yeah. Ms. Gevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. So David, that motion was just for uh, Article 23 Three. or all of them? No, 23. Okay. And 24. Let's just get it done. Both, all of them. Well, we already voted on that one, but. 
So that leaves 23 and uh, 24. Yeah. We just did 23. Yeah. Okay. 24. Sorry. Yep. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Go ahead, Jennifer. Okay. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Miskevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right, so Article 25 is the river bylaw, so we'll skip to uh, 26, which is the annual town election date. Are we, are we able to add into this article what the results were from the election for the non-binding question? Sure. Just so people have that information. Yeah, I mean, that's we, can, great. we can tell people the day of, but. I would be happy to give the explanation of this article. Can we get a motion, please? I'll move. Okay. All right. Our, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you didn't finish voting. <laughs> uh, Anybody going to second? I can. All right. Second by Amy. Motion by Jane. Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungalo. No. Ms. Kevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. I'm, vo I'm voting on to put on town meeting floor, but I'm not voting for it on town meeting floor. I'm consistent, John. Yeah, I know. <laughs> John's using up all his yeses already tonight. He's got to throw a no in there. <laughs> All right, Article well, Twenty Six. Said it's up to the people to decide. So, yep. Okay, Article Twenty Seven is the moderator term. Motion to move, accept. Second. Okay, motion by Joyce, second by Amy. Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Ms. Gevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. And the last article is the parking ban. Motion to accept. Hello. Second. Right. I was just reading it, sorry. <laughs> Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. <laughs> Jennifer. We'll call the Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungaloo. Yes. Ms. Gemitz. Yes. Parsons. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, that's it. I will make those changes and um, update them tomorrow. That wasn't nearly as painful as you thought it would be, was it, Carolyn? <laughs> no, actually, doing it has been the most painful part. <laughs> well, you did a great job, Carolyn. Good. <laughs> Thank you, Joyce. Yes. I have good help here. <laughs> it's called teamwork. I'm a favor of teamwork. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. So um, if we're all done with that. Let's move into budget discussion. I know we have the finance committee here, I believe, still. Hopefully they didn't fall asleep. And um, 
Amy, did you want to say anything? Are, are, are you guys going to break out into your own session or what's the plan? No, not anymore. We were going to, um, because we wanted to vote on the warrant, um, but a couple people couldn't uh, finish. They just couldn't stay the whole time. So um, we are planning on uh, doing our breakout session next, next week and we will vote on the warrant recommendations. So at this point, we're just here. Um, if there's questions or you need to address us regarding the budget. Okay. Anybody have any questions for finance? I do. I'm just not in favor of um, reducing the HR person salary. I think that we um, made a great attempt to put this position into place. Uh, yes, we did have a part-time person that took over the job while Ed was away, but I think that we're defeating our purpose by when we put this position into place. And I think there are some things that um, Deb was not able to get to. Uh, the town is getting busier. And, uh, you know, I just think that we need to, you know, stay on track with all of these things. And I'm not in favor of reducing that salary at all. I have a question for Linda. The budget that you kindly sent to all of us this afternoon shows the town administrator budget and the finance committee budget as being the same ultimate total. Is that correct? No. Um, no, they don't have the same ultimate total. They're, all, they're different by 295,000. What you're looking at, I believe, um, is the, top, the, the very top of the first page, yes, that's which is how to balance the budget. So the, yeah. the bottom line comes out, they're getting balanced the same, but what finance committee and um, Amy, let, let's make sure I say this correctly. Um, do you want me to share this? That's great, because I was trying to pull it up on my phone. Okay, um, can, can I share, Jennifer? Okay. All right, is that on the screen now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so the a budget starts out with uh, how, how the budget gets funded. And if you go to, and then the budget is table A here. And if you go to the end of the budget, you see the administrator's budget is 18,333,012. And the finance committee's is 18,037,708. The differences being three, they reduced the OPEB by the general fund amount. Um, it was initially fully, but I, we, we realized we had to, I, I think we all realized we had to um, adjust that. Uh, they reduced their own reserve by 15,000 and they reduced HR by 20,000. Okay, the reason that the bottom comes out, because now what Amy had to, had said she would do, and would you rather explain it, Amy, or do you want me to? No, we keep, we keep going, Linda. Okay, all right. So when we presented the budget initially, you see raise and appropriate revenues on, in the administrator's budget is 17,936. A, a good chunk of that uh, raise and appropriate is the real estate taxes. So when they reduced the budget by, I'm, I'm gonna say roughly 300,000, um, which is what it roughly is, um, Amy said uh, that the finance committee decided that they would uh, or, or advise taking that money out of the amount that was being raised in taxes. So you'll see the top line there for finance committee is 16,705. The other numbers then stay the same. So that's how the, the budgets both end up being balanced the same at the bottom line. But uh, because finance committee's uh, amount being funded and you see it here, the 18,003 and the 18,037, they're, diff they're lower budgets and uh, lower taxes being applied to the budget. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay, is that right, Amy? That's right, and so okay. that's, and then Dan sent through a, um, the tax rate um, uh, chart with where the finance committee recommended on that chart afterwards. Right, right. 
So rather than, so on that chart that we were originally looking at, oh, which is this one, which isn't the most recent one he sent, but roughly you were looking at this $350,000 line, how much is needed for the budget. And you reduced that by about your 300 and ended up down here somewhere. But I know he has a new, he has a new one, but I don't have that one. The, the rate, if I may, the rate was a 3.8% change and it's 1246. Okay, so and right in between is, these two. And raises $588,000 additional. So right. the, mm -hmm. the difference I see between finance and Carolyn is about $300,000. Slightly Correct. less if you go down. Correct. Um, and when I look at Dan's sheet that he sent us today, the difference for the least expensive house on his assessment is an addition between Carolyn and Finance Committee is a difference of $73 a year or $18 a quarter. And the most expensive house, the $900,000 house, which must be lovely, uh, the difference is $261 a year or $65 a quarter. I think with a new administrator, we should honor her requests and fund the budget as she sees fit and not cut taxes. The town needs a great number of things. We keep saying, yes, the town has to do this. The town has to do that. And I think we start here. Can we... Um... Linda or Amy, can you walk us through, uh, I know there's only a few differences, right, between the administrator's budget and the finance budget. You wanna do it, Amy? Sure. They're, they, I think they all say voted or something on it. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go to, I'll be able to get right to it. There, well, after all, we, we had a lot of discussion over many different items. And uh, after all said is, and done, there is ended up being just three items that really affect it. That would be the OPEB. We're pushing off the majority of the OPEB to the to the fall, okay? And so that's the OPEB. We're you doing the finance reserve? We were seventy five thousand last year, okay? Um, which we have been normally fifty thousand, and we are fine. But last year we moved it up to seventy five thousand because of the pandemic. Um, it was recommended maybe we even go up higher to the 100,000. We thought, well, we haven't actually used that much of it. Yes, we still plan on using quite a bit more because of there are item, other items still happening, but we thought that, you know, we could probably take that down. So we, we recommended 85,000, so we cut that. And then the last one was the um, human resource area. Um, which was up for discussion, which we then voted to reduce that. Now, so those are just those three items that is uh, changing the budget. Um, so it's up to your recommend. We wanted now to put, present it to you for your recommendations on how you would like to see those three items. If you want to take them up separately and discuss it, or if you wanted to do it as one whole, you know, if you wanted to discuss instead of doing, if it's, you know, if there's more discussion, you don't want to do it in the taxes, but you'd rather take it out of the free cash, the 300,000, you know, um, and push off OPEB. Um, it's, you know, we're ready to listen to your discussion. I, I guess, so the, the finance committee's budget would cut 20,000 from the HR salary position. Other than that, would there be any service changes? No or... service changes. Okay. So I guess I'm kind of leaning toward the finance committee's budget, but leave the 20 in for, for HR. And I don't know, that's just kind of what I'm looking at. I think the others are where really are we, Linda, where are we on spending on the reserve fund this year? What kind of numbers are those looking like? Um, I didn't, we just, we just did this. Um, I think we decided we'd spend around 20 to 25,000. The rationale for increasing it is 
is to as as more money is pulled out everybody likes to put a little cushion in their own budget and as they're being asked to keep the budgets down and those cushions are coming down rather than having a cushion in every department it's actually more efficient to have uh, a, a cushion in the finance committee and then the total amount that you have to set aside in that cushion is actually less than all the little amounts that are set up in all the all the other budgets so as you're trying to suppress the departmental budgets we you know it, it's probably a good idea to increase the reserve funds so that department heads know look go ahead you'll be okay because if, if you really do need that extra money if we have uh, if you have cut back too far we, you know we, it's something a discussion that could be had with the finance committee but um, honest, honestly, we haven't seen it really come out for just general budget. We, when we have used a lot of the reserve fund in the past, it's usually been a single large item that's taken up most of it. So it's not like every department comes back and looking for another three, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000. It's been like something happened for 50,000 or something. It's been nice to have it there. But you know, this year our emergency was well over 75, well over 100. So, um, you know, it's a guess in some ways. I'm going with David. I, I agree with the finance committee's budget, but I would like that money put back into HR. John, Amy. When we created this position, uh, we were supposed to uh, reevaluate that position. And at some point, I think we need to do it. We, we created a new position. We had a full time person there and we got a part time person there. Uh, a lot of this stuff was to take a little pressure off the administrator because they have, they have plenty to do all the time anyway. But I mean, it's still worth looking at. I, I don't know. I don't know what the people feel about it, but it's not really a lot of money. And if that's the only soft spot we have in this in the seventeen million dollar budget, I don't think you're going to cut anything else anywhere anyway. Yeah, John, I um, I do agree that we should be looking at this, and we can certainly evaluate it. I just don't think that we haven't had that conversation with HR or with other departments to see what impact there would be for making that change or that cut. So I'm not saying absolutely this is a permanent thing we must keep forever, but I think we just need to have more. That's that we took when we created the position. That's all I'm saying. No, I know. I'm just saying we can, we, it, you know, everything's up for evaluation and review in my mind at some point. We just need to actually review it rather than just say, that's it. We don't need it. That's, that's my only concern. I think we should reinstate it for this year. We didn't really have a uh, good sense of what needs to be done there. I know Deb carried us through for this past time that um, Ed was away. Uh, but again, I don't think all expectations and things were met of what a true HR person does. And I think he should have that opportunity to do that now that there's actually somebody in place there full time and looking to see what else we can um, generate from him uh, for that position. So I'd like us to at least be able to explore that for this year. And I'm willing to, you know, put that $20,000 back to make sure that that's what that position can offer to the town and uh, help us grow in so many other ways. So this is one thing we've wanted to do for the past, uh, probably, let me guess now, seven years. Uh, I'm putting that position in place. And mm -hmm. I hate to all of a sudden after a year that we want to chop it. So I don't think we've given it, it really a full chance to see what can happen with that position. So I, I would like us to keep it for this year, uh, see how we do what we need to do and how it works out now that COVID is starting to back off a little bit, um, different things are coming about, personnel changes. We have a older population uh, in our school systems and town 
of people retiring and things of that nature. So things that, you know, would come along like that. We've sustained um, only doing a temporary uh, MOAs with our fi uh, police rather and our DPW for contracts. So that again will be coming up uh, before their term is ended for next year. So that's another thing that uh, we will be negotiating and part which we hope that the HR person uh, will be undertaking at that point also. So there are things that are going to be a little more extensive than just what we did this year. So um, I think we need to really take a look at that. I agree. Thank you, Amy. So, uh, Amy or Linda or uh, Dan, what, what are we looking at? If, obviously we need to vote on this, but if we were to go with the finance plus adding back in the 20 for HR, what would be our increase roughly for, or where would we fall in the chart that Dan sent out? Well, it's exactly 20,000. Can you pinpoint that on the chart, Dan? Have the new, the new chart. It looks like it would be just the next step the, up. The next step up. Looking to me, it looks like it would be at 4% for the 12.48. So it would increase to the next jump. Yeah, it would be the 608,000 or 4%. I'm not hearing Dan very well. You said four percent. Four percent. Go from three point eight percent to four percent. So it's two cents on the tax rate. So it's about seven dollars for the average household. So we're looking at four, and then if we went with the town administrator's budget, where uh, I don't have that Dan's chart in front of me, where would we fall? What percent? Six and a quarter. So four six would be six and a quarter. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No offense, Carolyn. I'm not. I appreciate your work on it, but I just uh, I'm, I'm with the finance committee plus the twenty grand for HR still. So you're talking about using the funding plan that J Amy had presented and adding 20,000 to the raise and appropriate line. Is that right? Yes, so that way okay. HR, HR doesn't suffer any cuts. Okay, so for funding it, this would be 16,725,632 and then we back that into 20,000 more being raised in real estate taxes. Yes, yeah. okay. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying I don't want to speak yeah. to everybody else. What does everybody else have to say? No, I, I, I agree with that, David. Now you're at three, four percent now. So if you go back to the level funding line and two percent, does that still cover it? I think that's included in that, John. Well, you, it, it's actually a $25,000 increase, so. I guess, I'm not sure what your question was, John, as far as level, uh, level funding. Level funding's at 75,000 and uh, plus 20 would be the finance committee's 85 and the town administrators was at a hundred. What are you on the tax rate chart? Or am I on the wrong line? I don't, I don't know. know. I only got half the screen here anyway. Uh, I just don't know what you're looking at. That's all. Are you looking at the budget or at the Dan's chart? No, or? I'm looking at Linda's chart. Okay. He's looking at reserve. Oh, at the reserve uh, line item. Oh, for the finance committee? This? Yeah, scroll down, where is it? No, for uh, HR. Oh, okay. Where, where were you? 
HR is here in the middle now. No, I, I don't see it anymore. So on that HR, HR line item, uh, mm -hmm. the level fund was 109. The administrators was 127. Why, why did it, was there a salary increase there on the contract or something? Is that why that went up? The, a dollar, so there's the, it was, I, I believe it would have been even less, but we just did 20. Um, this, the HR director's salary is 70, about 74,000. So, um, and then we looked at what Deb, what the, what we had spent last year. Um, and then that's where the difference was about 20, but there was also, that was, that was only the part-time was only part of the year. We didn't want to undercut that spot. So we didn't say, we didn't calculate what it would be saving with everything else, you know, pension, the benefits and everything else. All we did is just say, okay, let's bring it up for discussion. Uh, let's use 20,000. And that's where we came up with the number because it came from what we had last year spent versus what this year request was. Because I guess that's what I'm, and I'm sorry if I'm not grasping it, but so it level funded at 109, if, if we had stuck with level funded just for this line item at 109, uh, our HR director would still be here and still fully paid, right? We're not, no? Because no. Of the benefits you, No, because he was, uh, he was away, the, the position, he was away for a lot of the year. And so there was a vacancy for while and then um, the half the part timer in. Do you want me to pull the budget up? No, I mean you don't okay. need to do that. Just give us an okay. explanation why okay. why we want to cut that budget by twenty thousand when we only had a part time person last year that just filled in for what we needed at that time. Right. But there's a lot more that needs to be done. So I'm yeah. not sure why we're nitpicking here because um, Carolyn's budget shows that. Yes. That's that's what I'm saying is based on level funded compared to the finance committee's budget, that only shows about what a three three thousand dollar decrease. Yeah, it's two thousand dollar decrease versus yeah. the Carolyn. administrator's budget is only eighteen thousand. How did it get to twenty? This is the question. I'm, I was the screen moved on me that I was looking at the reserve. But now I'm back on the right budget and I see the numbers. It's 109, David, 127, and 107. Right. So I, I, that's what I, I'm just not quite okay. understanding. Where those two I, I, have the, I have the HR budget here. Do you want me to share that? Yes. Please. Okay. Um, how do I switch? Do I have to stop and then start again? Yeah, get Maybe. it on your screen. You have it? Yes. Okay. So the green, the, um, what happened? Uh, oh, I think that, that's interesting. Um, I think that there was an adjustment made for the part for, for the, uh, when we voted it last year, we didn't know what was coming up this year. So I think we must have, we must have done a revote in the fall and made an adjustment for the salaries. Yeah, I we, honestly, I can't say now why that says 109 on the other page, but um, six or seven thousand dollars because there was a balance difference in the line item. <clears throat> you it probably I don't know a month or two ago to raise uh, to raise that a little bit to cover the full timer and the part timer. So yes, it was raised. To, for 21 to finish out the year. Um, My question is, so which number, if we made zero changes in HR, just kept our one HR director, which number would be correct for, for, for uh, this next year? Carolyn's is closer. Right, because we've got the, 
last year's the FY21 does not reflect the 56.5 does not reflect the, the amount that you signed with his contract. It reflects his being away okay. and a replacement. And it's not enough even for that. Um, I'm going to have to figure. Okay. So putting him in at the con his contract price and the second position here, let me go over to Carolyn's then, because this is where we adjusted contract price as increased in 22. Uh, the secondary position there, moving on as uh, it actually was recommended higher, but um, we're doing the one and a half percent there. Tuition and meetings actually did go up because of, because there has not been um, trying to look for more training there. Still, that's 143. Let me go back to the other. Yes, 143. Okay. So 127. Okay, so this is what Carolyn has recommended, and that is on the town administrator budget. The 127 was for the salaries. Okay, that's what I'm getting confused at. So the 127 was just showing those top two lines. Equals that plus that is, is 127, but for the 21 equals that plus that. That's the 109, okay? Uh, okay. All right. Sorry. I added those two for the 109. We added those two for the 127. <laughs> okay. All right. That makes more sense. Sorry. To okay. Make that, but I just. Want to <laughs> okay. Sure. Good. Good question. You had me stumped so, there. But can you on this same page, show us the um, finance committee's line. Just slide it. Their over. reserve. No, just slide over so I can see column beyond J. Oh, it's not on that one. Uh, it's a and it's a different format. Okay. Um, this was the or the original one from what which we were. We just had two. <laughs> was, there were so many columns, but I can I can go back to the other one. So keep in mind the one forty three nine one nine. Stop share. Share again. Go back over here. Okay. So there's the one forty three nine one nine. And <laughs> with the salary amounts being the 109 that we just looked at and the 127 we looked at. And okay. all right, and then now I'll slide this one over. And they took the salary, they took the 20,000 out of the salary line, which is, ends up being fairly close to what it was the year before there were three different things happening this year, a full-time, a part-time contract. So if you add 20,000 into that where your cursor currently is, you're the the finance, exactly yep. the same as the town administrator. It will be, yeah, that's right. They're exactly so, 20,000. So the differences come in the reserve fund and in the OPED funding. The biggest difference is yes. There's 15,000 difference out of the reserve fund. And the very biggest difference is the OPEP. And which the difference there is 277 minus the 16. So it's about 70, it's $260,000 difference. Now we did talk about that. That's possible that we can revisit that at fall town meeting and see if we have, uh, see how our revenues are doing and uh, also see how our free cash has turned out. We're improving free cash in a number of ways. Uh, one is uh, the this, this sweeping of the revolving funds. That was one of your earlier articles. Um, there's going to be probably at least 50,000 that we're going to acquire out of that. We have rollbacks. And we have the amount that the school said that they would be returning. So there's the 375 and we have um, departmental budgets of at least a hundred and then the um, hundred, uh, another 50 in the revolving funds coming back. And if I go back to the top, that's what I, those rollbacks and the school amount, those are what I was calling before anticipated free cash. But you see now, um, and I sent you that number on the ARPA replacement funds, that we can use. We're not even using the anticipated free cash. So when we get to fall town meeting based on funding the budget in this way, we're going to have all those still items, those items still available. 
So we're going to have the schools 375. We're going to have the, or 350. I don't want to say it wrong. It's, it, it is what, whatever they said it was and other rollbacks and the 50 from the revolving fund. And hopefully we're going to have increases in our own revenues. So we'll have that information. We'll have a new certified free cash as of July 1. We should have the funds to pay the stabilization fund back and maybe we'll have money to uh, either from free cash, but better still from increased revenues to be able to put that back into OPEB. Because we need, we also, we have to do OPEB get OPEB back up and stabilization, which we said we would last fall when we mm -hmm. used it to fund the mm -hmm. uh, reduction. Yeah, then you can do it all at once or you can phase them in over the two years the way you're trying to phase some other things because the our um, downturn lasted a longer, little longer than was anticipated. But um, that's that's that'll be your judgment and one that you won't really be able to make until the fall because none of those funds, the anticipated free cash are going to be available for this town meeting. They have to be certified first. Linda, you still have that two two 280,000 in the enterprise fund for wastewater. Is that number correct now? It looks like it, you just keep carrying it over. So. Okay, you want me to go down in the budget? Uh, or you no, 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 you were gonna check on it because everybody, for the last four or five years, we kept saying that that was in deficit, and it never was year after year after year. Uh -huh. The balance is two hundred and some, two hundred eighty something, I believe. Right, right. Uh, that is correct, then. Correct. What it was certified last year, July one, is the correct amount. All right. So you do have some reserves in in sewer. Um, I do believe I'm moving down to that budget if you want to, but um, so you may have a deficit at the end of this year, which would be covered by the reserves or you may not. Um, the last round of bills, I think Susan said they went out a little higher than were expected. So you know, we'll, we'll see. They did. They went about, uh, I want to say 30 grand higher than than what we anticipated. Yeah. And he's trying to keep those expenses down. So maybe we won't have to go into the reserve this year. So yes, the res that reserve is something that we can use for um, some of those earlier articles. We have to really pay attention, uh, pay attention and uh, look at it closely to see how we're going to fund some of these articles, particularly the emergency funds, whether we want to take them out in chunks, whether we want to do some borrowing, what's left there, where we're going forward. But um, we generally, generally that's done with the capital planning committee, which meets next week. So they, they're the ones that kind of make help make a decision on where everything should be funded from. That's what my next question was on a shortfall for short term borrowing. Is that what you're looking at? Um, I was I actually, I was looking at what I was talking about was your budget, your operating budget shortfall this year. I don't think you do you have a shortfall. <laughs> yeah, it's, everything works out. Yes, there are enough uh, going into 22. I'm into 22. We have, we have enough reserves for all of the funds to for all, and all the reserves to cover any shortfall in the budget so they can fund those budgets. All right, so I've got a question for Linda and Amy uh, Feiden both. Uh, and that this is actually from a resident. If we were to approve, let's just say the finance committee budget plus the 20 at town meeting and we base our, base our projected tax rate off of that budget, right? As a preliminary, is that how that works? Base it off of, yes. Okay. And Base it off of those, yes. Yep. And then, so if things recover like they seem to be on this track of recovery, and we end up bringing in quite a bit more revenue just in you know rooms tax, meals tax, whatever else. Yeah. Uh, the possibility exists at special town meeting in the fall to basically fix the tax rate or, or, or um, 
I guess, make some changes to the budget. So maybe with the tax rate doesn't actually have to go up that 4%, right? Depending on what revenues do and what, how things go in the town. Is that the best way to describe that? that that's actually true. That's actually true because what we're saying here is a raise and appropriate all the revenues are going to need to be 16 million, 725, 632. And if we have higher local receipts, maybe we don't need as much in the, in, in the taxes. Um, we will, um, yeah, that's, that's true. So this is not a, a done and over deal. Um, you know, I, I still ideally would like to be down around two and a half as an increase, mm -hmm. but you know, I just, I don't see a way we could unfortunately do that without really just making some major cuts in departments. So, um, if that's something we can revisit in the fall, depending on how the rest of the year goes, I'd be all for that. Um, I would like to see a, you know, see that increase at the end of the year actually be around the two and a half rather than the four that we're talking about. What what you're voting on right now is simply raise and appropriate encompasses everything on the recap except for free cash or enterprise fund. So if it's raise and appropriate and page three revenues come in four hundred thousand dollars higher you could say we want to use that $400,000 on page three of increased local receipts, and it would reduce the tax levy. The only change that you would have to make at fall town meeting is any ARPA funding would have to be specified. It would have to be directly voted out of that same as if it was a free cash article or stabilization. But Dan, we can't adjust the tax rate twice a year. Is, isn't that correct? Uh, the tax rate won't be set until fall, until after fall town meeting. Okay. All right. I, I thought we had to set it for the spring town meeting, uh, but this will be for after town. Um, it will be in the fall town meeting. Right. And, and we're going to have to meet earlier, probably before t fall town meeting sometime during the summer to discuss valuation changes. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Because with commercial values going down, we may have to be looking at a, a split rate on a temporary basis to stabilize the taxes for everybody. Okay, well, we've never that done that before, so that'll be interesting, Dan. Yeah. We never did it before. We don't have the money, and that's exactly why I'm for the level funding and a minimal amount of tax rate right now. So we could possibly avoid that. Will what we vote here make a difference in the next tax bill that goes out? No. That that would be at the fall town meeting. No, it won't because it's going to be preliminary taxes, which is half of the total annual tax that is paid this year uh, right. in this fiscal year. So. <clears throat> No changes to tax bills as a result oh. of annual town meeting approving this. this budget. Spring right. town meeting. Right. Yeah, not until the third quarter, Susan. It would be the third quarter where any change the impact collected, and then that could be adjusted at the, the fall town meeting. Exactly. Okay. All right. Well, that kind of sounds like a plan to me. Let's see if we can fix it in the fall. I hate to be be like that, but it is, you know. Okay, so are we? Do we need a motion to accept the budget with a twenty thousand dollar increase to the HR? Or, or does finance have more work to do here? Would, would they rather us wait, or you guys? What do you think? No, I would go ahead. I don't. I don't think that um, our plan isn't to um, go over it again. So, I mean, I, we we let's do it. We put it towards the select board for recommendations. All right, I'll, I'll make a motion to accept the finance committee's uh, recommendations with the change in the HR to not take out the $20,000. Uh, questions about the format, but you're in the middle of a motion now. Could I get a second to Joyce's this motion, please? Second. All right, motion by Joyce, second by Amy and Linda, you had something? 
Um, yes, about how you, what you want to go at town meeting. I'm very comfortable with this. This format has worked for us, and I think this last year we even added in the uh, we've added in this revenue section, which is more, and I, I think hopefully gives people better information. Um, I just wanted to point out what we've been doing the last few years is we do the prior year as a column. And this second column has been select board's budget. And then the third column, finance committee budget. So um, the reason this went through as town administrator budget is because select board, you hadn't made a vote before. So this is there as the filler. So what I'm suggesting is we now basically go down and I'll just make the changes to town administrator and call this select board because that's what people are accustomed to seeing um, and, and leave it there and then I guess the question is for, for finance committee, we'll leave that as you have it. And are you, is finance committee still going to put forward the budget as recommended? Or, or some, sometimes, I'm, and I'm, telling you, I'm not telling you what to do, just I know from the times, from times when I've had, uh, or being on finance committee, when we had a back and forth with select board, sometimes there were two budgets and, and the finance committee one went forward and sometimes they, they kind of worked together and made their numbers be the same by we got, by the time we got to town meeting. So I just don't know how you want to proceed with presenting this. I, I would go, well, at first, right now, I would do what the select board says. And then, and then uh, next week, when I have everyone uh, here to vote on the warrant, then we can re-vote and put our final vote in for the budget. Okay. So I don't want to uh, give you a definite right now without everyone being able to vote on that. Again, okay. put it through. I don't really foresee a big problem. This won't go to the printer yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. I will change the middle column then to be uh, as recommended by select board. And that will also change the figures up here at the top, which will be the same as the finance committee adding $20,000 to the raise and appropriate line. Okay. If, if this vote passes right here. If the vote. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jennifer, could you. Oh, roll? David, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready? I think so. Okay. And the, the motion to be clear was to accept the FinCom budget with changes in the HR budget as addition of $20,000. Correct. Okay. Roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? No. Chumbelow? Yes. Wiskevitz? No. And Parsons? The swing vote. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And we're gonna ask y'all to pause for just a second. Carolyn's computer, um, for some reason, the volume has just gone out on her. So can y'all give her just a moment to get us, to get back with us? Okay. She can hear you though, because my computer is really loud and we're next door to each other. <laughs> Linda, can I get a, a hard copy of that when you get it all figured out? I, I will send everyone a new one tomorrow. That's why I always put this date at the top. Yeah. So I'll make it May 6th. I'm going to make it, I'll, I'll fix it tomorrow and then get it out to, tomorrow. Yeah, can, I, can I just get a hard copy? I'll pick it up some. Absolutely. All right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I don't know if Caroline can hear me. Uh, Jennifer, that warrant, can I get a hard copy of that also? Yeah, I requested that also, John. I'll pick it up on Friday. Yeah, I, I didn't ask for it. I wasn't, just, I, wasn't just, I was helping, I was in the other office. I'm, I apologize. What am I getting for y'all? Uh, me and Joyce would like a hard copy of the warrant. Absolutely. I'll have them sitting on your table for when y'all come in. Um, you said Friday morning, Joyce? Yeah, Friday. Um, I'm off Friday afternoon, so I'll come in Friday afternoon. Brilliant. Okay, I'll have them ready for both of you. Thank All you. Right. All right, and quick, uh, so I, I know where you're coming from and can answer these questions from people. John, you uh, were a no vote because you want level funded across the board plus something. Is that what you were thinking? 
Yes, that's what I've been saying right along. Uh, we, we're still not out of the situation we're in. We don't know what our finances are going to be. Yes, I was surprised that our revenues are, are better than most communities, you know, with our commercial area and the colleges opening up, but we still don't know what's going to happen. Okay. And then Jane, you were a no because you wanted the town administrator's budget as written. Is that correct? Yes. I want to see more money put into other funds to repay them. Okay. Carolyn, are you back with us or are you? I am. Are you? Um, and I do need to bring something up about the warrant. Yeah, go ahead. We need to, to unshare. Yeah, you can unshare. Okay. So I, we went much further ahead than I anticipated. You guys voted on the warrant, on articles on the warrant and um, the budget. But the, the two conservation art, articles for, uh, uh, for the APRs were given to me after you guys had closed the warrant. So I need you to open it, vote on those two, and then close it for me, please. Does that make sense? You mean open the warrant? So uh, second. A motion by John, second by Jane. Jennifer. Uh, roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Tungalo? Yes. Miskevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, anything else for finance? Oh, Jennifer. You're not done. Add the two <laughs> articles and then close the warrant. Oh, so it's Sorry. article Grilinski and Handrich. So moved. APR. That was what? Articles 23 and 24? Correct. Motion by Joy, second by John. Jennifer? Sorry, I'm trying to do the minutes too. Um, roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Miskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Okay, and now close it, please. Motion to close the warrant. Second. All right, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Skevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So before we move on, uh, anything from Finance Committee? I, they might have already left. No, nope, Amy's still here. Uh, I'm, nope. I'm still here. Okay. Yeah, you want anything for us before we move on? No, nope, I'm all set. I think we're all good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye. All right, so next we have on the agenda, uh, we'll go to 6.1, North Hadley Village Hall RFP results. Um, first, I wanna preface this conversation by saying we are posted for an executive session regarding North Hadley Village Hall litigation, but uh, I will say that uh, Ham uh, the judge in Hampshire Superior Court denied the plaintiff's motion for an, a preliminary injunction against the town of Hadley to stop us from selling or from awarding this contract for the sale of North Hadley Village Hall. Uh, so we are able to proceed, but that's as far into that as we're gonna go in public session. So if there's any select board members that want additional information about that, we can, we can talk about that in executive or we, if there's no need for that, we won't have an executive session this evening. So it's up to you, uh, just let me know. But we won't talk about the injunction in the court case at this point, we're just talking about moving forward with the bid results. So Jennifer, do you, or Carolyn, do you wanna start off and talk about this? Um, Carolyn is gonna let me do it because she has been deep in the heart of this warrant. Um, so y'all were given the information um, late this afternoon. I was waiting um, 
for permission from the attorneys before I loaded all the documents up. So I know that you've just gotten it. I would like you all to um, look at the proposals. I'd like you to um, take the opportunity. Uh, but we received two proposals. They're, uh, both of them are here tonight. Um, the uh, first proposal was from uh, uh, two people combined together. It was uh, the Boysverts and the Bermucci's um, submitted a proposal for North Hadley Village Hall. And the second one was actually also a, a family combination. Um, I'm so sorry, I'm terrified I'm gonna say the last name wrong. Um, Beaudry, their last name is Beaudry, the Beaudry's. And um, they are all here tonight. So I know y'all haven't had a lot of time to look over the proposals, but I'd like you to review them tonight, ask any questions you have and maybe take this back up for a vote um, next week. Um, but the proposals are here. They both have um, very good proposals that look like they would be to the benefit of the town, but that's for y'all to make the final decision with reviewing. Yeah, uh, I, I have enough information to vote on it tonight, but uh, that's okay. up to the rest of the rather than kick it to next week. Um, I have enough information for tonight also. I'd like to move ahead. This, this little monkey has been on my back for long enough. Um, so between burning the building down, the mountain is burning, and I'm so happy that somebody has decided that they can do something with this. Um, so I am going to make a motion that we award the contract and uh, sale of the North Village Hall to uh, Boysvert and Bermucci at this time. Um, and that's my motion. I'll second it because that is the highest bid. I have I have had a chance to go through them and look at both proposals. So I have looked at both and um, I think it's fair and equitable. I think extremely both parties for coming out and putting bids on this property and hoping to sustain the um, village of North Hadley as I'm sure that they will. Um, so I was ready to and prepared to make that motion tonight. All right. So motion by Joyce, second by John. And uh, any further discussion on this before we vote? Anybody want to ask the bidders any questions? Anything along those lines? They are all here. So the, the public space was the big issue. And I think that both parties explained it pretty well of what they were going to do with the public space, the ball field itself. So I'm pretty comfortable with it. I wasn't a real big fan of the community gardens since we live in the middle of farm country and pretty much our whole town is a community garden. So uh, unlike, you know, living in Manhattan where we need a community garden, I think pretty much every yard in town has garden space. So that was my only, only thing. But, uh, yeah, based on just the, the bid price alone, uh, and I'll support the motion. So any anybody have any questions? No? Right. Do, do sellers have anything they want to say? Uh, sorry, Joyce, I, I didn't hear what you said. I said, do the sellers have anything that they would like to say? We are the sellers. Yeah, you're selling it. Sellers, you mean the buyers. Oh, the buyers, I'm the seller. Well, boy, have I gone over the edge tonight. It's a long day. So do the buyers have anything that they would like to say to us? Uh, Bermucci's, uh, Boysbert's, if you're here, do you want to say anything? Uh, good evening. <laughs> this is Joe Boysbert. How are you guys doing? Good, Joe. Thank you. Rick, come in. We had a little problem here with the uh, speakers on these. Um, yeah, no, I would just like to say if, if, if this is what the town, um, you know, is willing to do with us and work with us, we are extremely excited about this project in North Hadley. As most of you know, our, you know, rooted family here um, and what we do in North Hadley, we're excited about taking on this project and moving forward. Thank you. And uh, Joe, are you, ready to close or move, I should say, move forward very quickly on this? So 
in our bid package um in the you know in there we did say yes the answer is yes um if you guys are willing and ready to close within the next couple weeks um we are ready possibly sooner um so the answer is yes david um we are and and i know uh Zoe, that you're okay with us taking the bell of the tower and putting it up at north hadley fire station correct um, so Joyce, I did put a little thing in there of possibly displaying that bell in front of the existing North Hadley Hall um, in one of the prints that we um, submitted. Um, that is definitely not a make or break on this project. We just um, had thought possibly if it didn't have an existing home that it was guaranteed to go to and be um, proudly hung that we would display it in front of the existing North Hadley Village Hall there. Um, as we know, we have a couple of bells in town, but um, that is not a make or break. If if you, for some reason, feel that that bell needs to go elsewhere, then so be it. Um, personally, Joe, um, you know how I feel about the fire department, and I would love that bell to be up at our new uh fire station. I think you know, it's near and dear to my heart that we continue the, uh, the what our fire station is. And I think it started in North Hadley. And I would like that bell to be a part of our North Hadley fire station. Uh, we worked hard to get that built. And I think it would be a good uh, place for a keepsake for the town. So if that it's okay, I would like to do that. Yeah, that um I don't personally have any problems with that at all. Rick Bermucci and Michelle are um, with us tonight too. They can speak with that if that's how the town feels. I mean, obviously both Rick and I are on the fire department and we have no issues with that bell going up to the new North station to be proudly hung there. Our, our town administrator has an in with the, uh, our tree cutters that are around town and they are willing to remove that bell for us. Uh, and put it where we we would like it to be. So um, I certainly would, you know, appreciate that if that could happen. Rick and Michelle, do you have any comments? Uh, we also do not have a yeah. problem with that whatsoever. No, I, I I think the proper you know the bell should be properly displayed, whether it's in front of the the old North Hall or the new fire station. Uh, as long as it doesn't sit at the DPW like some of these other bells that the town has acquired and, and repurposed um, as long as it has a home and it's displayed properly. We're, we're fine with that. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I, 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 I will make sure that it will get displayed at what it should be. Thank you. Great. I did by the possibility that this could happen and could be announced at town meeting this spring. That would be great. Yep. Uh, and so one other question I have for uh, the three of you is um, as far as as is, where is, I just want to be clear that there's no, you know, we don't want to negotiate uh, or have any further conversations about this later on. Uh, we just want to make sure you're clear that the it, it is what it is, uh, you know, trash, pig, pigeon droppings, whatever else that happens to be in the building. Yeah. 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 You know, for us, you know, take what you want as long as it's not destroying uh, structure. Um, but if there's anything, desk, file cabinets, shelving that is there that you want, or we will handle whatever's left behind. Yeah, the big thing, the bell. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I would just like to chime in exactly to reiterate what Rick just said. Um, absolutely. Um, whatever belongs to the town and whatever the town would like to take, please do um, what you don't want leave behind and let's all as a community move forward and uh, make this place, you know what I'm saying, what, what it used to be um, back again. Thank you. You know, you could actually make me cry tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> no, because this has been, you know, a really a long journey um, for this building um, from me wanting to take it down totally yeah. Um, but I finally found that people in North Hadley that really appreciate it want to do something that will make it good for the town. And I thank you for that. Exactly. Thank you. Well, thank all of you guys, too. 
So uh, any other comments before we vote on the motion on the table? Looks like Mr. Boudreaux is here. I don't know. Yes, if I am. Know. How are you? Good. Thank you for the opportunity. Love the building. Love. Um, I'm, I'm happy to see that it's going to be uh, restored to what it should be. And so. we thank you for putting in a bid. Um, I, I know that you would have done well for us also, but uh, I, I think whoever would have gotten this, um, I appreciate that you even considered it. So thank you very much. Nope. Thanks for the opportunity. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Jennifer, roll call. Can, can I ask a quick question? This is Teresa Bugger. I would love to know what they proposed against what we proposed. So I, is there any way that you can just give us a brief outline of what the plan is for the building? Um, a brief. I, I can run it down real quick for you and Joe and Michelle and Shelly and Rick can all jump in. Uh, they were proposing um, storing, I believe Mr. Bermucci owns a construction company and they're going to store his vehicles in the garage and then put in a small office for his business. And then they would have apartments on the other portions of the building. They were hoping to put in apartments, if I understand correctly. And they were leaving the town property open for the townspeople to use for parking, picnics and such like that. And if y'all, if I have missed something, please jump in. I think you summed it up perfectly. Yeah, no. And I, I will also it. say that both proposals are loaded onto board docs and they're all completely viewable by the public. Thank and you. I'm happy to email that link to you. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank, thank you also. And, and the, big, the big, the big part of my decision was the $10,000 with the financial situation we're in right now, so. So. All right. Jennifer, can you roll call it, please? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. And Chungalo? Yes, with a hallelujah. <laughs> I had a feeling you had something on the end. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We look forward to moving forward with you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. We will work with you also. And let's get Great. it wrapped up quick. All right. Um, moving on here. Uh, Chief, what are you hanging out for? Chief Mason or, and Chief Spankdub, are you guys waiting on uh, Aquavita? Anything else that we, so we can get you out of here? Uh, I was just asked to be here for any questions on the Aquavita thing. All right, so let's hit that real quick so you can get out of here. Uh, 6.3 Aquavita Road speed limit and stop sign request. Um, I asked this be put on the agenda because uh, many residents from Aquavita were uh, upset about the cut through speed on the paved portion over there. Um, I guess right now there are no speed limit signs whatsoever on Aquavita Road. And uh, so I wanted to give them, a, I think Amy is here. And so um, Chief, do you wanna start off or Amy, do you wanna talk about the, the issue there? Sure, so um, I'm, I'm at the halfway point on Aquavita Road. I'm at the 50, yeah, our street is a mile long and I'm at the halfway point. We're set back and I've lived here for 32 years. I was never aware of how much traffic went down this road. Um, we had a we had a funny thing. Someone was leaving coffee cups on a mail on a neighbor's mailbox, so we put up a trail cam, and from that we found how many cars are traveling. And they're about twenty two hours out of the twenty four hours of a day, there are cars going up and down the street. And we have a lot of folks that come. So just to, just to give you a perspective, if you're not familiar with Aquavita Road, it's a one mile stretch of road. It's a farm road. One half of the street is completely farmland. And then the other side of the street is half farm, half residential. And we have a lot of folks here that uh, many of us have dogs. Uh, we, have, we have a young child that lives right on the corner of Aquavita Road. Um, so we're very active on our street, walking our dogs, riding our bikes. 
but we also have other folks that come down here as well. We have a lot of people that come down from Bay Road to right to jog, walk. Um, there, we have a lot of bird watchers. There's, a, there's an exorbitant amount of traffic on the street. And I don't think people are aware of that. And it's very similar to North Lane where people, there's a group of people that are using this as a cut through to avoid Route 9. And those are the folks that are not very respectful of our neighborhood. Um, I've had in two instances in the last three weeks where someone has come barreling down from the dirt end from Bay Road toward Aqua Vita and have nearly run me and my dog off the road. And if you ask them to slow down, they flip you off, they swear at you. So um, as a collective, we've been talking for some time of what can we do to still have that quality of life on our street and allow people to come down and enjoy it as a sanctuary, but to reduce the hazards that are coming through. And part of the issue is that our street isn't marked because it's a farm road. We do have stop signs. We have two massive stop signs down at Route 9, and we have a stop sign down at Bay Road at the inlet. Um, but we don't have any speed limit marked here. And people tend to, the people that are cutting through, not the people that are coming to enjoy it as a sanctuary, are coming at excessive speeds. And we've had the several residents on the street have experienced hazards due to that. So we've been trying to come together as a collective and figure out what can we do? And then when the whole North Lane came up, um, in my head, I said, it's very similar. Uh, people are being rerouted down our street. They're being told it's a cut through. They're, take this as a side, you know, take it as a side street. And we'd really like to, some help from the town to decrease that cut through, to eliminate the speed on our street and to make it safe for the residents to live here and the people that come off the side streets that come here to enjoy it. And so I'm coming to the select board to ask, what can we do about that? Can't we, can't we make that because it's a uh, partial farmland, partial residential? Can't we not make that not a throughway? Thank you. Is that an option? That, I, oh, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, me too. Um, as far as not making it a throughway, I don't know what the select board's uh, authority would be to do something like that. Uh, we could probably reach out to Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and ask. Um, I don't know that you would have the authority to um, to kind of shut. We, we went through something similar with Rocky Hill when uh, some of the residents wanted to try to uh, limit the amount of commercial vehicle traffic on Rocky Hill. And Pioneer Valley Planning Commission advised us that there's there's definitely some no pun intended, some road, roadblocks in the way uh, to do do things like that. Um, but Mike, but Mike, this is a farmland. This is not. Uh, it's totally different than Rocky Hill Road. Yeah, I mean that, that would be what we could ask um, uh, Pioneer Valley Planning and see because half of it is residential and half of it is you know dirt road farmland. So it would be kind of interesting to see what their answer would be. Yeah. As far as uh, enforcement and slowing folks down, you know, to take it a step at a time, uh, we can certainly add that add that uh, road to the list of, you know, roads that we try to uh, deal with traffic on and slow folks down. Um, the list continues to grow, obviously, as uh, as uh, COVID is, uh, you know, leaving us and schools coming back in session. Um, step two, or or this a secondary step would be signage. Um, you know, this isn't the first time that that folks, uh, you know, who have no signage on the streets whatsoever have requested speed limit signs. Uh, I don't know of anywhere in town that we have anything less than a 25. Uh, even the speed bump road, North Lane, that we just put the speed bumps on uh, is a 25 mile per hour zone. Um, one thing that the select board does have the authority to do as the um, traffic commissioners it's under, uh, under chapter 90, uh, section 17, the select board does have the authority to make a town-wide speed limit. Um, the authority only grants you to go as low as 25 miles per hour. As a matter of fact, the MGL specifically says 25 miles per hour. And essentially, uh, rather than taking these a street at a time as you go through and have to you know, incur the costs of everyone who wants a speed limit sign, uh, you would only really have to post at the 
um, the outskirts of town, so to speak, at the town borders on the main roads that come in and simply put a sign up that says 25 mile per hour speed, um, you know, a everywhere except where otherwise posted. Um, and that would allow an enforcement action for, you know, police to enforce that 25 mile per hour zone. And it would also, you know, save the town on having to, you know, put up speed limit signs all over the place. I know it doesn't necessarily solve the problem uh, of notifying drivers uh, on each street, but by the way the MGL is written, when you post those signs at the um, town borders, that's your, that's your sign, uh, the way that they look at it. So as far as the enforcement goes, we can certainly help um, with that and, and get that on our list. But the, the signage, um, the select board has a couple of options and th those are them. You can put up speed limit signs on Aquavita. Um, that's something that uh, uh, Chris Okafor can take care of for you or you can um, look to, to do a townwide speed limit. So is that as enforceable for your officers as having signs on the street? Exact same. Yes. Can we look first into making it a non throughway for yeah. traffic? Um, yeah. When we, when we, uh, when we researched the Rocky Hill part, David Nixon was still here and David has uh, had some contacts over at Pioneer Valley planning. Um, and it was real quick uh, back and forth uh, between he and they. Um, I don't know if, if Carolyn, uh, I, I'm fairly certain that the questions would have to come from the town administrator as opposed to other departments, but I can work with Carolyn on, on crafting that and we can see what they say. Uh, I can't give and any I, answer. I don't yeah, know. and I only think of that, Mike, because lots of times that roadway is flooded, especially in the spring. So it's really not a throughway at that time unless we put up horseshoes or something like that the uh you know the stationary things that block off the roadways um so people can't go down there but um certainly i think at this point we could make it not a throughway i don't think people should be cutting down there to cut over to bay road i think that's you know uh, it, it it hinders the farming apparatuses and different things like that that are down there early in the morning or late afternoon um but can we ex at least explore that first and then head towards the signs and things like that or signage? But, you know, it really isn't, isn't good for people. It's okay when they come off the bridge and turn that way. And I don't see them doing it that often. I do see people trying to come out of there onto Route 9 and try to cut across the road to go over the bridge to, to like Northampton area. So that's a dangerous um, uh, roadway to even come out of and try to cross over onto R route nine. Don't you think? Yeah. That and 400 other places. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you want to go oh, down? You're so this? cute. You don't have enough of time tonight, Joyce. I uh, know. I, I know. But I'm, I'm just thinking about when I come over the bridge in the afternoon at five o'clock and I've got people inching out into route nine to get across that because they've cut down Aquavita Road. It's just it's just not a good scenario at all. Luckily, I've seen our police officers officers sitting there at five o'clock waiting for traffic to come over the bridge. So they're, they're um, looking for they're looking for you, Joe. They're waiting for you. I, I wave to them when as they go by. <laughs> um, it, it, it's the select board's pleasure on how we approach this. We can we can look at the throughway first. Uh, if I had to take a stab in the dark and guess. It's probably not going to be a viable option. Um, yeah. Even just thinking of it from an enforcement perspective, um, you know how are how are the officers going to know who lives on the street? Are we going to stop everybody and check IDs for their yeah. address yeah. Uh, on the road? Um, yeah, I guess you have. I guess you have to be sitting at. Yeah, I guess you'd have to be sitting at the other end of the road when they come out onto Bay Road. <laughs> A lot of the traffic is coming from Bay Road headed toward Route 9. That's where we've experienced people cutting through. Yeah. But, so when you said the other way. It doesn't matter because you no. know, there's three lanes there. You got to know how to work it. You get into that turning lane that turns into the marina and you move your way out to the right into the other two merging lanes. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how it happens. That's how you get out of the Aquavita Road. 
So Joyce, when you said no through way, I was thinking uh, dead ending at the end of the pavement. So people coming down from Route 9 onto the paved portion of Aquavita down there who live down there couldn't go out all the way to Bay Road. And then the farmers coming down Bay Road would basically dead end at the paved section and have to turn back out and head back out on Bay Road. That's kind okay, of what I farmers, think. So, so like Moody Bridge, right? So like what, I don't Bridge. Like about, what I don't like about that is the majority of us go out Bay Road to avoid Route 9. So a lot yeah. of people, it's dirt. The majority of us to get out, to go out, to travel into Hadley, we're going to go out there. So we still need access. And the only time that's a problem is when we're flooded. And then we have, then we're forced to go out onto Route Nine. So, and I think that would also limit access to some of the farmers because half of our street is still farmers. The first half of our street. Yeah. I yeah. would like to see a dead end, but I'd like to see something that would deter people, even if it's a psychological determinant where they go, "Oh, I can't go through there," and I have to stay out on Route Nine. Um, but you know, I also, you know, we thought about. I mean, we've talked about this. There's several of us on here that have talked about what can we do with, you know, how do you make it a private way? Do you put in the speed strips? Do you put in signs? I really don't want to have a speed limit sign in front of my house. You know, the one thing that I like about living here is there's no street lights and there's no strips on my street. There's no sign. You know, it's a nice, quiet country street. And that's what we like about it. And that's what people enjoy about it. It's the people that are making it unenjoyable that we're trying to defer. And I don't well, know how to do that. Yeah. Now that we've all kind of hashed out what we thought or think we should do, um, I would like to leave this up to uh, Mike, uh, Chief Mason, and working with DPW to see what would be the best option and work with the residents down there to also involve them. Would that be okay, Mike? Yeah. I mean, we can attack the enforcement portion as far as how fast people are driving right now. We can start that immediately. Yeah. Um, I can uh, reach out to Carolyn uh, and we can reach out to Pioneer Valley and see about the throughway if they, number one, if it's legal and number two, if they have any ideas on how to approach it. Um, mm -hmm. I would just um, need some direction on the board or from the board. Uh, and Chris Okafor technically would need more of the direction than me as to uh, whether or not you want to um, you want to engage um, in the speed limit. Uh, sign discussion now, or if the uh, if the throughway part, you want to wait until that fails and then bring it back before the board. So I, I, I think I would like to see you explore the non throughway, but I don't think you need to bring it back to us. I think between you and uh, Chris Okafer, you can work it out to feel what's best for our residents and what we need to do for that roadway. I'm, I'm going to leave it up to you 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 people that deal with this all the time what's best for your department no you're gonna give me but there's currently here, Joyce, there's no am i gonna what john uh can i get a couple words in here sure go the for board's it decision i think first of all we need to check on chapter 90 as mike said it could affect some of our chapter 90 money as Rocky Hill Road did when they went through at that time. I think a town-wide speed limit may affect our uh, Chapter 90 funds and other road work. We really need to research this a little bit more than on a town-wide speed limit. I, I'd be for 25 or 30 miles an hour on Aquavita Road right now for those people, but. Yeah. 30 miles an hour is extreme. It's extreme. So um, I mean, really, so really simply down here, 30 miles an hour is way too fast to be driving so down the street. Really simply, it's the boards. This, the board is the one that has the authority on this. I don't have the authority. I can do the research for you and we can send you the information. But the board has to be the ones to decide as far as the speed limit goes. If you want a 20 mile an hour zone in there, then you can vote that through and put it up. You have the authority to do it. We don't have any other 20 mile an hour zones in town. Um, I would, uh, like I said, that's why I recommended the, the MGL one, cause you have 25. Um, and that's, that's what the, the law allows you to do. So then let's do this. If, uh, unless someone wants to throw up 25 tonight, uh, why don't we do some research and find out what's going on? If we cannot make it a no throughway street, then 
what we'll do is we'll post the hearing at our next uh, select board meeting. So members of the public can come and comment and we can then decide whether we want to make townwide speed limit 25 or 35, right. 30 or whatever it needs to be. Yeah. That way we have some input and we're not just picking a number. Um, and, and, you know, we, we, we just need some research, unfortunately, because we don't want to affect our road road funding by doing the wrong thing. Mm. I'll agree with that, Mike, David. Yeah. Mike, a, a non, non-throughway street that says uh, local traffic only, I believe, is the way it is in a law, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, non, that's what I usually see when I see non-throughway streets. But uh, I, I just, I don't know, uh, I don't know the mechanism forcing something like that. I don't know what kind of help it's going to give. All right. So unless we want to do something tonight, why don't we do some research and then uh, we'll come back on this in a, in a week. That's That sounds good. May I ask Rob Kershaw just one question? Sure. I, I don't I don't know how absolute, I live on Aquavita Road, how absolutely unique Aquavita is, but I, you know, I, it is. Hear you, sir. So, You're, uh, uh, Rob, it's hard to hear you. Oh. Uh, is this any better? A little better, not much. Okay. No. Try that. Okay. Um. Anyway, hopefully you can hear me. Because, um, because it's I don't know if it seems relatively unique in that we have a lot of long open roads, but they're not usually small residential roads. And then we've got lots of small residential roads where people don't usually race down the road at, at high speeds um, because it's just not possible. But Aquavit is sort of a combination of this long rural road um, that people can really race down, but it's also, you know, res residential. And I'm just wondering, is there a way to uh, would there be any benefit, and you guys would know, not me, you all would know, to um, sort of measuring, I know there's sort of things you can lay on the road to see how high the volume of traffic is and at what speed to, to sort of quantify what kind of a problem we're dealing with. I mean, you know, if we might look at it differently if there was a large volume of people racing down at 45 miles an hour or, you know, it's not really happening. I mean, we have this, all have a strong sense that it is a big issue, but Anyway, I'm just wondering if there's any benefit to that. Certainly, and, and uh, we actually we have uh, we have a couple of speed signs that are actually doing a, a speed study right now. Um, we can move them up there uh, and uh, grab some numbers. It, it may delay, you know, getting this back in front of the board if we want to get have some actual data. So maybe we can aim for you know a couple of weeks from now, and we'll grab some data and then and then reassess. In the meantime. Uh, as soon as we get the signs up there, in the meantime, I'll get the other things that we that we talked about. So I'm um, actually um, kind of visualizing um, Aquavita Road. You have you go down Aquavita Road, you bear off to the right, and that takes you into the residential section of Aquavita Road. If you remain on the main road, you're driving through farmland stirring up dirt and all that kind of good dust and stuff when you're going through the farmland. How many times does a car actually take a right to go down in front of the housing area? Hundreds. Uh, pardon? Hundreds. And I'll tell you, and this was my, I said this in the beginning, we had a friend that um, at, they're only here temporary. We have several homes here that folks are only here Either homes are vacant or they're temporary. So there's, right. you're, and so they're summer homes kind of thing. And this coffee cup kept, kept showing up. So my husband put a trail cam up just to see who was leaving the coffee cup. And like I said, we're set back. So I don't see the traffic all the time. Our, our other neighbors are right on the edge of the road. And I was amazed when my husband pulled the trail cam chip out of that camera from, from, four o'clock in the morning and until two o'clock the next day, it was hundreds and hundreds of cars that went down the street. I've lived here for 30 years. I had no idea how many cars go down the street. And okay, so, um, so let's look at this in another direction. So you go right or you go left, you go left, you go all the way out to Bay road, correct? Yes. So, so if people are taking a right, 
and going down in front of the houses that are down there, the big question is why? Is it, would it be more simpler to say not a throughway to where the houses are? And Mike, you might be able to help me on that with instead of uh, doing the direction of going through the left side of Aquavita, which would take you out to Bay Road on why people are going down the right side of Aquavita in front of the residential homes. They go both, yeah. so there's, a, there's a significant amount of traffic that comes from Bay Road go, going toward Route 9. And those are usually the most highly offenders because they come barreling, they're down in the farm field and they think they can just, if there's no speed limit and they can go 45 down there and then they hit the tar and then, um, you know, and then it's a matter of whether they slow down or not. Um, but regardless, we have a lot of people that walk our street. A lot of dog walkers, uh, an exorbitant amount of bird watchers. But and you're on, but you're on the right side of the Yakovita Road. If you're coming from Northampton, going yep. up Hadley, all the houses are on the right side. Correct. We all walk the street. We all have kids that are riding bikes, walking right. dogs, watching birds, people coming off of Bay Road that are using yep. it as a, as a sanctuary street. And then we have people that are barreling through here and have totally but coming but coming down the left side of the road not the, the the majority come from the left side they're coming from hadley going into northampton area okay the, so the those majority, those cars those cars are not going around and coming down in front of the houses they're coming down straight through the fields correct well the houses are on the fields so if you well the, road, the houses the houses you're separated by a good portion of a field in front of your house. Yes, but they're coming from Bay Road going to Route 9. But they they're not actually going down. They have to pass our houses. But they're not going by the houses. They have to. Yeah. It's right. a one mile strip of land. Yeah. The houses take up one half mile on one side of the road. If you come down our road, there's only one inlet and one outlet. Whether no matter which way you come in and out, it, once you come in, you're committed. So they're coming by the house, they're coming down through the fields, and then they're hitting the tar where the house, the tar, the house, most of the houses are on tar. Some of them are not, some of them are campers. But regardless, three quarters of one side of our road are people that are living here permanently or temporarily. It's their property. And when we go out into the street and try to enjoy the area. We have other people that are, let me tell you, the crew team, the crew teams were the one of uh, huge offenders. Um, and somebody called in on the crew teams and somebody had a conversation with them. Now, last year due to COVID, we didn't have the crew team buses coming down here. But the year before, 4.30, they're flying down here and the dust, I can't tell you, the dust is flowing into my house and they're going so fast and um, there's, we're not marked. There's no speed limit. So right. they just I gotta I gotta cut this off here because we gotta we gotta keep moving here, but we have an agenda. Yep. But, okay. We'll do the research and uh, we'll get some some data on speed from the speed carts and then we'll revisit it. Uh, don't worry, we won't forget about you, but we're not gonna fix it tonight. So yeah. I, I, unfortunately okay. we gotta keep going. Hey, Mike, you, Mike, you can count on those trailers and get the speeds. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it gives you averages. We've used it to do speed studies uh, several different places in town. It works. Okay. All right. So we'll we'll work on that and we'll uh, come back in uh, next okay. week. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you for your guys. time. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks for showing up. All right. Bye. All right. Thanks, Chief. You can uh, go to sleep now, finally. <laughs> Good night, Chief. Uh, All right. Thank you. So let's move on to COVID-19 update. So we held a, uh, this is 7.1 on the agenda. We held the unified command meeting today uh, with myself, uh, Dr. Moser as the board of health chair and um, Chief Spanknable as well as the emergency management director for the town of Hadley. And we discussed terminating the emergency declaration that was signed by Christian when he was chair back in, I think it was March of 
yeah, March 25th of 2020. And so nobody had any objections to canceling the emergency declaration. What that did was when there were so many unknowns due to COVID-19, it allowed us to spend whatever money the town had available from whatever portion of the budget because we just didn't know what we were dealing with. So there's not really a need for that. And um, Chief, if you're, if you're still here, do you wanna chime in on anything? I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, I just, I made, we made the recommendation together. Um, so that's, that's all I have. All right. So it's, uh, my intent to sign this and to terminate the emergency declaration. But if any of the select board members wanted to say anything, just wanted to give you a chance. Thank you all for, for doing that. I know it was a lot of work, especially in the beginning. Sure it was. It's not over yet, but we are certainly heading in the right direction. And I hope we all can. Uh, keep that path going. Okay. So uh, unless there's any objections, I'll go ahead and sign that, consider it done. Um, and so we're out of our state of emergency for COVID. So that's one more thing out of the way. And then uh, let's go to, what I miss, Carolyn? Town Administrator Report. Oh. Select board meeting schedule. How about we do that? Attached are a bunch of dates. Unfortunately, we were meeting just about every week for, well, it seems like for the last two months, but um, this will move us back to the typical first and third uh, Wednesdays with the exception of holidays that may come up and other special events like town meeting, special town meeting, things along those lines. So when are we going to start meeting in person again? And can we talk about not having these meetings start at dinner time? I think the, at least for me, I'm good with Zoom for the foreseeable future until, uh, you know, I guess, I guess the governor changes the, the guidance on meeting remotely, but uh, you know, what does everyone else have to say? I think we should still do this until probably the fall when we can have a better handle on where everything is at that point with uh, colleges all ramping up to come back and be whatever. And if people are all being vaccinated and doing what they're supposed to be doing, um, I don't have a problem with looking at the fall for um, getting back to um, having in in-house or wherever we want to decide to have it. Um, at that point. As far as changing times, anybody have any comments on that? Um, you know, I'm type. fine with meetings and I'm fine with time. I mean, right. six o'clock would be a little bit better for me, but it's all right. Yeah, six o'clock might work better for me because I'm really scurrying to get over the bridge. Uh, I get out of work at five o'clock and, you know, it's a mad dash. Um, especially if we get back. Well. Say that, John. I said, I think it's working out pretty well this way, but yeah, another half hour later wouldn't be bad. I don't want to go into seven o'clock again and we really need and to. And into my bedtime here. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we really need to discuss the night meetings when we do go back, because maybe we should go a little earlier to six o'clock. We should maybe stick with. I don't know. I, I would like to stick with at least five thirty or six, which is fine. I I don't mind. I think six is uh, probably an easier time. I think about the people that have also worked all day, as you, John, have, and uh, Jennifer and Carolyn. Um, uh, yeah. Linda, everybody has already put in their time for the day as we all have. Um, yeah. So if 530 works, I can certainly still make it work. Um, if six o'clock is feasible for people, that's okay. I'm, 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 I'm flexible. So whatever anybody else wants to do is fine. Supper time can wait. I'm certainly, uh, I'm not going to starve. I'll tell you that. So we can uh, certainly make it whatever people want to do. Jane, would uh, six o'clock be better for uh, dinner time and wine? That would be lovely. Uh, and Why don't we try it for a while and see how that goes? Yeah. 
Carolyn, any major issues on, on your end or Jennifer's end as far as? Okay. All right, are we good with six? Good with me for now, sure. We'll try it. Starting next week? Yeah, we can do it next week. Sure. I, I know Joyce ain't gonna like this idea, but if we go back to maybe three times a week instead of every week, maybe well, first three times time, three times a week, John. I mean, what three times a month? <laughs> first, first, second, first, second, and third. You know, so the meetings are a little shorter because the shorter the meetings, I know the better you like it, Joyce. So. Well, I don't mind, John. I think I was gonna starting, say that. I think starting at six o'clock, it has worked out well. I haven't mind starting at six. And, you know, normally we sometimes get done by 830, if, even if we have a three-hour meeting. So that's, that's fine with me. I think I only want to keep it to two unless we're doing budget um, and, or if something unusual comes up and then we can add that third meeting. But I would still like to keep it to two meetings uh, as every other board has it for now. I agree with John that David had a huge list of things he wanted to get accomplished this term and doing it every other week. We're never going to get there because there's always the essential things we need to attend to and it doesn't give us time to process other issues. Yeah, our daily items would be done in two meetings. And as we spoke about before, maybe that third meeting would be to specialize in one item that, that we're all looking into, you know. But we can always call an extra meeting if we have to. I would rather set two meetings a month. And if we have something special, then we can add it. Right now, we have four meetings a month the way it's going. We're on special around annual town meetings. So, yeah. I'd like to try through the summer. I'd like to at least try it just summer is probably our downtime. We could do it for two meetings um a month and see how it goes and revisit this in the fall unless something comes up yep and since the town hall's open i think we should all make the attempt to go in and start signing the warrants again too yeah that's fine all right well can i get a, a motion to approve this list as a starting point and meeting starting at 6 p.m going forward via zoom I move. Second. All right. Motion. We'll, we'll call that motion by Jane. Second by Joyce. Roll call vote. Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungalo. Yes. Miskevitz. Yes. Parsons. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was a long drawn out yeah <laughs> well i'm like conceding to 6 p.m but i also like have to get up early in the morning so i'm like i don't want like really really long meetings that's why i would concede to 6 p.m but also additional meetings as needed so they're not wicked long yeah we'll try not to keep them long none of us like the long ones we all get up at five o'clock amy or more <laughs> Okay. I'm with you. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> Carolyn, anything from the uh, administrator's report that we need to hit tonight? No, I, I wanted to spare you that. So I knew you were doing the warrant and the budget. Okay. And I think that was it. If uh, anybody has any announcements, we don't need it. Does, do we need an executive session? I don't think so, but I'm going to ask the question. I don't think so. No. Okay. I think so. Yeah, we'll skip that. And uh, how about announcements? I only had one, and I don't know if I had mentioned it before, but it was brought to my attention that uh, Jake Matusko had passed away, which is Peter's father and Amelia's ex-husband. But um, I just want to send condolences to their family. Uh, was a lifetime resident of Hadley, electrician. And um, so I do send our condolences to his family. Uh, I forgot one thing, sorry. And this was unforeseen. It was um, brought to my attention by a capital committee member 
that uh, we left Christian on the committee, but it's actually a violation of the capital committee's bylaw or charter or whatever uh, outline they have to have two at-large members of the community on their, on their bylaws. And so they are meeting, I guess, next week. Um, so he brought that to my attention. So I wanted to see if we could resolve that real quick. I said I would volunteer for the spot if no one else wanted it, but if anybody else wanted it, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. It's just to get us in accordance with uh, their rules before they start voting on these capital issues for town meeting. If you wouldn't mind doing it, David, I'll motion that you accept that position. I'll second. Okay, motion by Joyce, second by Amy. Anything else on that? No. Okay, Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalu? Yes. Ms. Kevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yep. Thank you. And thanks for to Christian for volunteering and sorry we couldn't keep you on there. So yeah, again, thank you. Um, all right, any any last announcements? Tommy, did you have something? You turn your camera on. I'm, you must be here for something. Yes, uh, forty seven Bay Road. The owner had suggested you know or offered to donate the property. Um, of course, the stipulation would be removing the house that's been condemned for I think about three years now. Where is this? 47 uh, Bay Road. The oh, down by. House. Okay, down there. Yes. Okay. And who's who's offered to offer it to what, Tom? Uh, Mrs. DeForge, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. They live on Middle Street. Um, right. But they haven't been able to sell it and it's condemned. And with the conservation at all, you know, everybody that researches it realizes they can't do anything with the property. So, you know, being in the floodplain and all, the stipulation would be that the town would be required to remove the house. That's the, the bad part about it. Do they, do they need a vote instantly on this or can we push this to uh, on the agenda for next week? Is there, uh, is there a deadline on it? No. Okay. Nope. It was a week or so ago. I sat with them and that was their best solution. They did reboard it up, but they, they have the issue of people, you know, living in there and, and everything. So they just as soon have it gone themselves. Okay. All right, so uh, I'd love to talk about it. Let's uh, let's push it to next week, just because of the time and, and whatnot, so we can have a good discussion. And let's see what let's see, let's uh, bring some more details back. Maybe the fire department can burn it down, like they like to do. Tommy, can you send me the details so I can add it to the agenda, please? I, I think that sure. I think that uh, house is on water and sewer too. So. All right. Anything else? Oh, motion to adjourn. Adjourn. <laughs> second. Uh, motion by Joyce, second by Amy. Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right, see you on the 12th at 6 p.m.